place I ever thought I would be to do a tour, but we are at a water renewal plant. I'm going to find out where the water and the blood and all the chemicals from the funeral home go to after they go down the normal drain and what process they go through to get cleaned up to put back into circulation. So it's just an auger that picks the water up and the water is lifted one time and then it goes by gravity through the entire facility. So after it's picked up, we go to screening. So it's a quarter inch screen, takes out all the rags, anything that won't fit through a quarter inch screen is collected and then compacted and disposed of in that dumpster. So toilet paper? Toilet paper, the flushable wipes are not flushable. They are a huge problem for the wastewater industry and because they get in the pumps and clog the impellers. Um, they're not flushable wipes. <laughs> so there's three th things left from the 1950s. These tanks. There that, it is. That building, there you go and the uh, digesters. So this is primary settling. There's an empty tank here so you can see um, the components of a, this is a primary clarifier. So the solid, the water comes into this, we mix it with ferric chloride, eight settling. And then if this was running, these, uh, the sweep would run this back into a hopper back here to collect the solids. So this is moving, collecting the solid in a hopper here. Bioreactor. So there's thousands of these, thousands of these pla plastic pieces in here and the microorganisms attach themselves to this attached growth process so this is covered with a zoogeal or a film the microorganisms live there for about 30 days they consume the pollutants and then they fall off as their their life cycles over and go to the secondary clarifier for settling and they'll go to the bottom again that biosolids is removed goes to digestion so we have air and the food is BOD or biochemical oxygen man. Uh, there's phosphorus, nitrogen, a little bit of solids. It's all digested here. We'll look at an empty tank to show you how this process works. The process was created for the Lillehammer Olympics in Norway because the footprint was very small in these mountains. So it uses a very small footprint to be built on, but can handle uh, cold weather and high waste loads from the influx of people in the small village. So that plastic was developed that many years ago. For the Olympics. Basically. That's and now insane. It, and now every proprietary person has a different shape plastic. So the process, this is an empty tank, so the process is as follows. The wastewater comes through that gate should it be open. There's no media or plastic media in this tank. The screens keep all the media in here. The bottom is an aeration grid for the air. If, 
It then passes through the screen into a second tank. Mixed again. The second tank is screened and then it goes through the outfall, which we can show you next. So that's what the polymer does. Grabs all those fine microorganisms and, and turns it into bigger solids. So that is the process of We'll look at we'll look at the live tank, but this tank is out of service. All the water flows through that large conduit into the baffle, and then it settles. The flights then move the solids to the center, where we have a pump that removes the solids. Again, the solids go to anaerobic digestion. The water goes to be chlorinated. Okay, we'll look at the live tank over here. How many solids are left at this point? I mean, we're talking. It's a, We've we, gone main, we, main, we maintain a foot in there. I mean, there's wow. always a foot of solids in there. Wow. Because the process is honing in on. So, this is a live tank. All the wastewater comes into the middle with its polymer in it, settles, and then we've got a V notch weir that equally distributes the water and you can see that it's pretty clean. Mm -hmm. because that wa this water has to have uh, a minimum of four parts DO, dissolved oxygen, because you don't want to add it and say it's taking something out of the river. Gotcha. So you're adding it, it has to be above. It normally runs six parts of dissolved oxygen. Now, the foam you see, this is a discharge to the Kalamazoo River, and that, that white foam is actually a natural born surfactant. Surfactants are in soap. This is actually a microorganism that when it's all mixed like this is releasing itself. For example, you're at the end of a lake on a windy day and you'll see foam on the beach. It's the same thing. So the solids are all collected and they are heated in these two digesters to 95 degrees Fahrenheit by a water bath. Um, like a boiler and the boiler is fired by uh, methane that is created by the digestion process so we're using our methane created by the digest process and then there's a little bit of natural gas in there because the natural gas has not been cleaned it's, it, uh, I mean the methane has not been cleaned and the natural gas brings the temperature up to completely volatilize the methane capture the methane in the top so the balloon is capturing methane gas. Once a year we haul this and then it's subsurface injected into farmers fields. Now that crop cannot be used primarily for human consumption it has to be a feed crop. Been all kinds of 
analysis done on this, and it is very safe. So, so what goes from the funeral home to here and is then processed, if any of it gets into here, it's not going back into fields that humans would be eating out of, just animals. Correct. It has to go into a wheat that's going to be used for feed or alfalfa that's going to be used for feed. Gotcha. Many times corn. And it's interesting because this process creates ammonia nitrogen, this, this, the solids in here have 180 parts of nitrogen, which is really high. So you'll see the corn is like a foot higher than the other corn. When it's used from here? Yeah. But so, what about it makes it non-usable for humans? I mean, is it just they can't test it enough to make, say that it's safe? There are, with all of this now, because the analytical has gotten so good that we're finding trace elements of everything. Uh, they're called micro constituents, and that would be uh, steroids or birth control or or blood pressure medicine. They can test that, and there are. This is a parts per trillion I'm talking about. Yeah. But there are parts per trillion in the biosolids and parts per trillion in the effluent going to the river. This is the control panel for uh, the waste gas burner. Should we not use all the methane? and the storage is full, it then goes to a waste gas flame. Uh, some call it the eternal flame. It's just a big waste gas burner like you'd see at a landfill. I mean, the, the people are very concerned about formaldehyde and the blood and everything going back in the water. What is worse than that, that goes in water, that people use, that would be more concerning than what may go down the drain at a funeral home? Well, um, electroplaters. Which so do you find, because there's formaldehyde in a lot of industry. Yeah. And a lot of things. I mean, in ho common household things have right. formaldehyde products in them or formalin or things that are, you know, parts of formaldehyde. So does anything ever trigger you here? From funeral home, would you no. ever get? We would never. We like would, you would at the metal factory. I mean, or, or. Yeah, we would never see the minimal amount that is sewer. It wouldn't become. It wouldn't become uh, uh, an IPV issue. Right. For wastewater plants. Okay. But you don't. It's not anything you. It's not a, you check industry, you know. So flushable wipes are more of a problem than formaldehyde is what you're telling me. It really is. True story. True story. I mean. 